Welcome to the road to 1 million US dollars. Let's get right into the Bitcoin chart for today. Over the last couple of weeks, Bitcoin has just been consolidating in this descending channel where recently we actually broke above this descending line of resistance, which has now been flipped into support. And you can see it very nicely here because even though the price is currently in a bit of a downtrend, it is still holding this level of support. So that is definitely a level that you need to keep an eye on in the short term here. Now, in terms of indicators that you should be keeping an eye out for, first of all, we have this descending line of resistance on the RSI momentum indicator that recently we broke out above of. However, right now you can see that we are falling down a little bit. So potentially the RSI just needs to retest this previous line of resistance, which again has now been flipped into support, potentially just retest it and then blast off to the upside. This is something that I will keep tracking over the next couple of videos until we see clear confirmation of what is actually happening here on this indicator. And also taking a look at the MACD momentum indicator on the daily time frame, you can see that ever since the top at 73K for the Bitcoin price, we actually had a lot of bearish momentum. However, recently we started flipping back into green on the daily MACD momentum indicator, potentially signaling that the price is ready to reverse to the upside. We might be seeing some more bullish momentum soon. So in the case that we do see more bullish momentum, and us successfully testing this level of support, getting a bounce from there, we might face some short-term resistance right here at about 67,000 US dollars. However, after that, in the case we do break to the upside, the next level above that, the next resistance level above that is at about 71,000 US dollars. However, there are some other resistance levels in between the current price and that 71K level. So zooming in on the four hour time frame, you can see that descending line of resistance that we broke out of and are now potentially retesting before like I said, potentially blasting off to the upside. So the key level of support that you need to watch in the short term is actually right here from 62.4K all the way down to 60,000 US dollars for the Bitcoin price. Because in the case that we don't hold that level, so you see the price trading below and actually losing support at 60K. Well, in that case, the next level of support below that price is actually from 58,000 US dollars all the way down to 56.5K. However, right now in the short term, this level isn't really relevant because the 60K level is a massive level of support. So for now, I would just keep an eye on this level right here. That's about it for the bearish scenarios though. In the case that we do just start trading to the upside from here, the next big level of resistance is right here from about 65K all the way up to 66,000 US dollars. And if the price does break through that level, like I said, we might get a little bit of short-term resistance right here at 67,000 US dollars. However, if we do break above that price, the next big level of resistance is all the way from 68.5K all the way up to 70,000 US dollars for the Bitcoin price. Now, if you are a beginner in crypto and want to learn more about trading, I highly recommend you join my Patreon where you can follow my trading course for free by simply clicking on this button and signing up. And in fact, I actually uploaded a new video about two hours ago, specifically about how to use trend lines, exactly like the trend lines that I use in my videos and even this video right now. Click the first link in the description of this video and you can join for free. Now taking a look at the Bitcoin liquidation heat map on the three day time frame, you can see that recently we took out a little bit of liquidity to the downside right here. However, it hasn't fully cleared this pocket of liquidity and there's still more liquidity below it as well. So that is something significant to take note of that there's liquidity all the way down to about 60,000 US dollars. And if you are not familiar with this chart, don't worry. Basically, all you need to know is that typically the Bitcoin price gets attracted to where there is most liquidity on this chart. So where there are the most yellow areas on this chart. So in the short term, there is a little bit of liquidity to the downside. However, you can see a lot of liquidity to the upside here at about 64.9K and then again at 66,000 US dollars. And zooming out on the one week time frame, you can see that recently we took out a big pocket of liquidity to the downside. And similar to the three day time frame, there is still a lot of liquidity to the downside as well. That is actually something very significant that we do need to take note of. However, zooming out to the one month time frame, it is very clear that most of the liquidity is in fact to the upside with about $3 billion worth of shorts that would get liquidated if the price reaches 67.3K. And liquidated in this case, meaning that 
people that are currently shorting the Bitcoin price will lose their money on their trade. Now moving on to the Bitcoin ETF flow tables for today. You can see that yesterday on Tuesday, we had a net outflow of about $16 million. And after we had two net inflows from Grayscale, the investors over there thought, no, it is enough. It's time to start selling again. So um, yeah, we are now seeing more selling pressure from Grayscale. And like I have been repeating pretty much ever since I started this channel a couple of weeks ago, Grayscale does not have an infinite amount of Bitcoin. So at some point they are going to run out. And as you can see, since the launch of the Bitcoin ETFs, they have already lost about $17.5 billion worth of Bitcoin that has been sold by their investors. So eventually they're either going to completely run out of Bitcoin or they will have very little Bitcoin left. And you would start to see either net inflows or just very small outflows. And with that decreased amount of selling pressure, potentially that could leave some room for the other ETFs to buy, sending the price higher. Though at the same time, if you look at these inflows from yesterday, they are also very, very small buys. So it seems like right now, in fact, actually since the start of the consolidation, ever since we reached the top at 73K, it seems like the demand and interest in the Bitcoin ETFs has actually fallen quite significantly. Though I am of the opinion that if we do see the price break above this descending channel, likely a lot of volume will come back into the market, just like there will be a lot of volume if we break to the downside of this descending channel. Because for example, right here, we actually had the largest outflow day from the Bitcoin ETFs because it simply scares investors. And since there aren't really any crazy price movements, it's not really attracting new investors to come into the market. And you can also see this in the fear and greed index, which is basically just a market sentiment indicator. And last week, the fear and greed index was just at a neutral level. So because of this, there just simply isn't that much interest in the space because nothing is really happening <laughs> over the last couple of weeks. So let's go back to some actual analysis and take a look at Ethereum on the daily time frame, where recently we got rejected from the 0.786 Fibonacci level after which we traded all the way to the downside to the 0.5 Fibonacci level at about 28.50, where we found some support and are now just ranging in between the 0.618 and the 0.5 Fibonacci level. Though if we do take a look at this four hour time frame for Ethereum, it becomes pretty clear that we are in a clear downtrend. But as soon as we see the price break above this descending line of resistance, potentially that could be the signal for us that the price is ready to reverse back to the upside. So now taking a look at some key support and resistance levels. Recently, Ethereum got rejected from this resistance level, which is setting from about 3150 all the way up to 3250. And the next level of resistance above that is the 0.618 Fibonacci level that I talked about earlier, which is sitting at about 3330. Though for now, it actually makes more sense to worry about the support levels because this has been a pretty sharp decline in the price. So the big level of support that Ethereum has actually already potentially bounced from is this big level of support from $3,000 all the way down to $2,850 and also aligning with this 0.5 Fibonacci level at $2,865. Now moving on to Solana, where we see a similar story, getting rejected from the 0.786 Fibonacci level and then finding support at the 0.5 Fibonacci level at about $133 for the price of Solana. So to get some more information, we need to take a look at this four hour time frame for Solana, where recently, exactly like I warned about in my previous videos, we got rejected from this short-term level of support at $160, where now we have fallen to the downside exactly into this level of support, which is sitting from about $140 all the way up to $150. So potentially we could see a bounce from here. However, in the case that the price does trade lower than that, the next big level of support below that level is actually from $133 all the way down to $124 for the price of Solana. That's about it for the bearish scenarios though, because in the case that we do trade to the upside, again, we would be facing this level of resistance, short-term resistance at $160. But if the price trades above that, the next level of resistance is actually from 166, all the way up to $171 for the price of Solana. Now, if you're currently alone in the crypto space and want to join a crypto community, I recommend you join my free Discord server, which you can join with the first link in the description of this video. Thank you for watching today's market update video once again, and I will see you tomorrow in the next one.